Tis the season for mystery boxes, and uh, I guess I'm no different than anyone else. I'm going to open one. This one's a bit unique, though. I bought this from the ARRL during Black Friday sale. There's actually their 100th ARRL handbook in here, which I already wanted to get my hands on. So let's take a look at the goodies, and we'll check out the book, too. All right, so $92.48 was the total for this package. Now, it's my understanding that the hard copy of the handbook is $80. I'll add it to the screen here. So about $12.50 or so of extra swag, I assume, will be in here. First things first, this heavy boy, this is the 100, the hardbound edition, which I, I did want to go with the hardbound. I find the utility of the singles, the single books, if you'd like to watch a video I made talking about the ARRL, going to the new multi, um, multi-volume multi system. I kind of like that. It's They're a little bit easier to handle and use. But let's take a look at this 100-year handbook. The 100th edition, 2023. So pretty, pretty nice there. Cool. All right. Shiny, really shiny. So you can see all my lights in the background here. All the edit. Well, there you go. Ward Silver right there. What's up, bud? All the different editors, contributors, additional contributors. Lots of people in here. So we'll come back to this in a second. Let's finish out what's in the box. All right. I'm about to lose one thing right off the gate here. We've got a. <gasps> no way, is this a dog leash? An ARRL dog leash! I actually can use this. This is, okay, cool. Uh, ARRL branding all over my dog now included. A bunch of stickers for Cycle 25. A bag. Oh, ARRL, you know me too well. Repeater directory for 2022? Okay. <laughs> sure. Still handy. Most of these repeaters are still going to be good next year. Repeater directories. Repeaters stick around for a while. So if you buy one of these, they're generally good for a couple of years. Some you'll find are good for over a decade because, again, a lot of frequencies don't change. Down here in California, we've had the same useful repeaters for decades now. So not a big deal on that one. Contest, National Contest Journal. Is this a... I think... This is like a little tablet. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's cool. It is a tablet. Shiny. Ma shiny. This is a backpack. Yeah. An ARRL field day backpack. I wonder if this will fold into itself. If it folds into itself, that has immediate usefulness. Side zip, thin, real lightweight backpack. And that looks like the receipt. So the mystery box for Black Friday went for $80. Then once I factored in shipping, that's where you get the $92.48 from. But a, a decent smattering of stuff here. So backpack, dog leash, stickers, little paper journal, a repeater book, which is interesting. I'm I haven't had one of these in a very long time. Ever since the internet, I haven't needed one. But yeah, there you go. Let's take a look at that uh, that handbook. I, I don't expect this is going to be drastically different than, than 2022, but who knows? High altitude balloons. What is this? Is this explaining the chapter still? Yeah, about this book, how to use it. I go into uh, greater detail on the portable radio operations section in the handbook, if you'd like to go into that. but. Um, let, let's take an opportunity to use this as a bit of an overview. For those that don't know, the handbook is a, a tome of ham radio knowledge. That's its goal. That's why it's so thick. That's why it's so beefy. That's why it covers many different things. This book is of value to experienced hams, young hams, all kinds of hams. This is a great Christmas gift. We already may be too late for Christmas, but uh, anyway, belated at least. It'll cover things like the bands of operation, different types of modes, contesting and resources. And we're just looking at the first couple of pages, right? This is kind of like the beginning reference to break things out. Hey, FT8. So they're going into FT8 and digital modes a little bit. Lots of pictures, although sometimes pictures are handy in this sense. I always love to see people out there enjoying radio. But frankly, I, I, I like their um, some of their types of diagrams for antennas 
and whatnot. But check it out. Chapter two starts out literally electrical fundamentals. This was helpful for me, and you know, as some of you guys may know or or not know, I'm a software engineer by trade. I've spent you know almost 20 years now in the area of software and systems development for you know major aerospace type programs. So I don't get into electronics very often. In in fact, never. I'm never messing around with that. I'm always looking at algorithms and whatnot. With that said, this is a handy little chapter along with all of the stuff you see pretty much in this handbook. There is some depth, but believe it or not, it's not that deep. This is like a, a 101 class in a lot of cases. There is a bit of greater depth, but it's thick because there's just so much to cover in ham radio, right? So circuit principles. So you have things like Ohm's law, the time saver here. People have this literally tattooed on their body. There's a more complicated version of this, but this is if you cover up one thing, you have current times resistance. If you cover up R, then it's going to be voltage over current and the same thing, voltage over resistance. And this is how you can work Ohm's law very easily. Anyway, I won't belabor electronics that much because I'm not the guy, to be honest. Let's flip through a bit more. Radio fundamentals, how radios work, AC waveforms, harmonics. What is a harmonic? Explaining what that is. Square waves. Sawtooth forms, uh, sine waves, these are all things for all you synth nerds in the house. You, you know already about this stuff, but same kind of deal. Very important to all of us. Square waves. All right, I'm okay. I'm okay with square waves. Lots of circuits. You can walk through these if you run into something you don't know what your problem is necessarily or you're unsure of what the solution is. You can just start going through here and running through the index, the glossary, and find a lot of answers just by going through it rather quickly. Identifying ferrites by inductance. Identifying ferrite with a sweep impedance. Identifying a ferrite with an ohm meter. All valuable things. Talking about what the uh, in impedance is of a choke, multiple turns when you wrap the wires. What is that for? Well, that's to cut common mode current off of your off of your feed line. Pretty helpful stuff. And it talks about what the different feed, uh, ferrite materials are. Something that comes up a lot on the ham radio crash course after chats. People asking questions about that dang noise in my home. How do I get rid of it? So lots of things here. I won't digital signal processors for voice, for receiving of radio signals, crystal oscillator circuits. You can see there's just so much stuff in here. It's such a cool book. It's and it's always been really, really helpful. Here's a good one for everybody who has this book and hasn't looked into this. Passive LC filters. What is a low pass filter? Low pass to band pass, high pass filters, high pass to band pass transform, all or stop transform. All these things are really, really good to know for when you are dealing with different issues you may encounter in amateur radio. Spread spectrum modulation, where you're jumping through frequency sets at the same time with other radios to be able to, to transmit and receive. Really, really cool. We don't do enough of that in amateur radio. I should, I should figure out a video on demonstrating that to people. That's a lot of fun. Here's something, though, that I found in the middle of the book. The 100 editions of the Radio Amateur's Handbook, and you can see all the different covers that they have there. This is in the middle, and there is an insert of all color pictures. And it's an, sorry, the glare, it is shiny. There you go. An interview with handbook collector Jim Skip Youngberg, K1 NKR. Pretty cool. And look, he's got like literally all of them down there. Maybe not all, but a pretty good amount. 1926, 1930s. Look at that. Cool. This is a little fun insert that they added. Nice. And you better believe there's a chapter on antennas. And it's a good one. It walks through all kinds of different types of antennas. It starts out with dipoles and other types as well. Where's the dipole? Wasn't it right there? Dipoles and half wave antennas. Perfect. Big sky donut, right? As far as a radiation pattern. Inverted V dipole, so many dipoles, parallel dipoles, and fed half wave, which is kind of like a dipole. Folded dipoles, you name it. Look at all these dipoles. You want dipoles? We got dipoles. Vertical antennas are ground planes, right? Quarter wave verticals or whatever you want to call them. Look at this. Great book. Uh, I, I probably can't go much further than that. You're literally watching a video of me going through a book. Wow. Let's get out of here. Shout out to friend of the channel, Ward Silver. Nicely done, buddy. At the time of recording this, the ARRL 100th edition of the handbook goes for $70 in multi-volume set 
the hardbound is $80. I paid $80 for this mystery box. I think it was a special for Black Friday, so I guess I lucked out. Value-wise, sure, I was going to buy the hardbound anyway. As for you, should you buy the hardbound or multi-volume version of the AWRL handbook? I haven't looked through it completely. There are always updates every year that they come out with a new edition, new features to it, new pieces of information. We are going through somewhat of a renaissance of digital modes right now, so there is inevitably new information for digital modes and some of the new hardware that's out there. I think I saw something on free DV, which I've talked about in another video, uh, but I don't think was in last year's. I could be wrong. I still like the multi-volumes when I'm working on something on the bench or I need to research something. It's a lot easier grabbing one of those volumes, going and sitting down on the couch or getting in front of a project than it is kind of manhandling the big hardbound. But from a collector standpoint, you may want to get the 100 year hardbound. I don't know, I'll kind of leave that up to you and your book consumption needs. Anyway, tell me what you thought about this video in the comments. I promise I'm not doing another mystery box for a while. This one was just kind of something I had to buy because it was Black Friday, right? Anyway, let me know what you think of the video. Post the comments below. And I'm linking you to another video that I think you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. See ya.